It's Labor Day 2020 and this is your Labor Minute. Hello, I'm Mark Harrison. For the past five years, this would be the part of our broadcast where I would wish you a happy Labor Day. But I'm afraid I can't do that this year because it just might be that this is the worst Labor Day in history for workers since organized labor was able to lobby for the Monday holiday that traditionally closes out the summer months in 1882. Indeed, the fact is that very large group, a very large group of workers in this country that we here at TLN have been spending the last five years reporting on find their vulnerability has now morphed into a full-blown crisis. And to make matters worse, no one in Washington cares. Well, they care if they're asking for your vote, but where are their actions? And despite what you hear on Fox News, the $600 stimulus checks were keeping people solvent. They were keeping people housed, were keeping people fed, and in far too many cases, they were keeping people alive. Now, Fox News would have you believe that people were sitting home spending that money on frivolous items and refusing to go back to work because they didn't want to take the pay cut. And that's a whole other show that we're going to get to. But that's not the point today. We are hovering at 10% unemployment, a number that is affecting a huge and disproportionate demographic who are our most vulnerable. Indeed, as of mid-August, 29 million people were receiving some form of unemployment benefits. Job postings are 20% what they were one year ago, and many small businesses are hanging on by a thread, with one in six saying they will have to shut their doors within the next six months unless the economy drastically improves. And across America, one in eight households don't have enough to eat. The United States of America and one in eight households don't have enough food. The most basic human need is being denied as politicians hide, as our labor leaders are weak and ineffective. Our charities are stretched beyond capacity, and those once considered unskilled labor are now referred to as essential workers, while in reality being thought of as expendable human beings. Where are our leaders? There are none. We are in charge of our own destiny. It's never, never been more clear. Today traditionally kicks off the last phase of the campaign. It is now a 60-day sprint to the election in November. And as if it's even possible, and it is, things will ratchet up from here on in. It will get even more nasty, even more heated. You'll need to listen deeply to what the candidates are saying, not what they are spinning on the surface, rather what they are truly saying and what they are doing. Are their words matching their actions of the past? Who is funding their campaigns, you'll need to ask. Are they taking money from many, or are they mostly taking money from the wealthiest among us, the 1%? Not only the presidential candidates, but those in the U.S. House and those in the Senate who are up for re-election. Your governors will set the tone for the state in which you call home for the next four years. Know what they're thinking. What are their records on right-to-work legislation in your state? Look behind the veneers and find out who these people are. Your local officials and school board members will be running for office in many cases to begin their political careers. Get to know their core beliefs. Is the local school board member who is running on a platform of the teachers being paid too much legitimate? Or is that local school board member recruiting, uh, running on a platform to recruit the best and the brightest to educate your children? You simply must find out. We blew it four years ago. As workers, we completely blew it, and we have been paying the price ever since. And if we don't get it right in two months, life as we remember it will never be the same. Labor unions will cease to exist. Worker rights, health care rights will cease to exist. The promise of a brighter future for generations to come will be a distant memory. Indeed, the America we love, the working class America we celebrate today, on this day, will be gone, relegated to the historians to decide what went wrong in America. 
And it won't be racism or immigration or gun legislation or gender recognition that went wrong. It will be that those in this country who reap the economic benefits of this, the wealthiest and most prosperous nation in the world, a country that was built by the labor of its hardworking populace, in the end, turned its back on them and watched the very social fabric those hard workers built over a hundred years tear into an unrecognizable dystopian society. I'm Mark Harrison.